Welcome back. Now, before we proceed to the programming lessons, I would like to highlight and talk a little bit about these options here, these tabs, tasks and tools. So let's first go to the task. In the task, you have behavior, master task, periodic task, events, free POUs, user-defined functions and function blocks. So what are, what are these? What does it mean? So if you click on behavior, you will see some options here. These are very important. Sometimes you might need to configure that as well. It says the startup mode. What should be the startup mode of the PLC or of the program? It starts in the previous state or it should start in stop mode, start in run mode or unconditional start and run mode. So it's by default in previous state. It will tell you what was the previous state and it start in that previous state. If you want, you can always do start in stop mode or start in run mode or unconditional. Without any condition, you can start in run mode. This is a bit dangerous. So by default, it is in previous state. I keep it like it is. Then you have a watchdog timer. Now, watchdog timer is by default set to 250 milliseconds. Now, what is it and what does it do? So many times when you have a bigger programs, the scan time of the PLC depends on the length of the program. So if you have a bigger programs, if you have multiple loops inside, PLC needs more time to solve the logic. And if the time needs to solve this logic increases more than the watchdog time, PLC will raise an alarm or an error state. So this watchdog timer is the limit which PLC should not cross because this could be in critical situation, you have some signals which should not be missed. So your watchdog should be, let's say, 100 milliseconds. So if your PLC programming time is more than 100 milliseconds, you have to adjust something in your program to, to so that program does not exceed beyond that time in these situations. So 250 milliseconds is a very idle time. And if you've seen my last videos, the PLC scan time was in microseconds. So this is the watch long time. You can also change that if you like. Then you have fallback behavior. What is a fallback behavior? If the PLC goes into uh, error mode, if something is wrong with the PLC, what should happen? You should have fallback values or should you have maintain values? Now, what are the fallback values? This is only related to the outputs. So if you remember in the configuration, we have digital outputs and we have fallback values, which is all false. So if PLC is going into a fatal state or an error state, I prefer that my output should be in the fallback values. It should be all false, which I have declared there. But if I say maintain values, it means if the output was true and PLC goes to the error state, it will maintain that value of true signal. So this is very conscious choice. You have to decide what should happen when the PLC is not responding anymore. It goes into error mode. So here it also has a warning. The maintain mode will not apply on the output used at HSC reflex output. So if you have a high speed pulse output, it will not be applied on that. So I prefer to keep it on fallback values. Okay. Then you have functional value, functional level, and there are different levels. So I read about in the manual. So you are on the top level, which means you can do anything you want in the software. You have authorized uh, permission to do everything you want. So if you see, if I go to there, this feature uh, is basic feature. You have PTO access. Level three, you have communication modem display access. 3.1, you can have unconditional start and run feature. So these are different levels of uh, function that you want to have in your project. I will keep it level 13, not zero in this case. Okay. This was about the behavior. And then you have master task. Let's apply that. In master task, you can define your main program. Okay, so there are three different types of tasks, master, periodic, and event. These are the three types of tasks. Now, master task, like I said, holds the main logic, the main program where you can call the functions, you can call the function block, and you can uh, have some subroutines inside. So master is the main program. So if you open this one, you have a POU, and that you have one rung. So master will always have one POU, okay? Although you can have multiple POs inside, but it will always have one POU, which will be called when the PLC is running. And out of these three tasks, master task has the lowest priority. What does it mean? So let's say I have uh, an event in which I have uh, some interrupts coming. I want to execute something immediately. I don't have to wait for the scan time. Okay, that I will define in the event. Okay. So event has a top priority. Whatever interrupt comes, it will execute right away. Master task has to wait. Interrupt will come and then it's over. Then master task will continue. 
In between comes a periodic task. So master task happens every scan time. So scan time depends on PLC logic. If the scan time is 50 microseconds, my, uh, master task will execute every 50 microseconds. Okay. Then comes periodic task. There are some tasks you don't want to run at the same speed as the master task. You can define the time. So here you can see we have periodic task from 1 to 255 milliseconds. So you can define this periodic task should run every 1 millisecond or every 10 milliseconds, every 50 milliseconds. This you can define here. This is more oftenly used when we are doing uh, PID controls. We define that in periodic tasks. And events we do when we have some interrupts coming in, then we do events there. Okay, we will see also high speed counters. We will do, uh, I hope we will do that in events. And then in master task, you have two options. You can do normal. Normal will work the same way it is working with the scan time. Or you can also make periodic master tasks. It's also possible. Then you can define the period here. Then it will be periodic. It will work every 100 milliseconds and not based on the scan time. So I keep it normal. So all the program that I'm going to do, the basic programming, I will going to do in master task with a normal scan mode. Okay, this is what I wanted to highlight before we continue. So here we will uh, we will jump more into periodic task when we are working on PIT and events when we are working on high speed counters. But as of now, let's stick to master task. And then you have free POUs. Now free POUs are the ones which are not used anywhere. So you can add POU here. And these free POUs can be used as subroutine. So we will come to that topic later when we talk about subroutines. You can define subroutines in free POUs and then you can use it in your main task as well. And you can also assign from free POUs, you can assign to periodic tasks or you can assign to events as well or to the master task, also possible. We'll come to that later on. Then you have user-defined user functions and user-defined function blocks. So these are, you might have seen also in my other videos. User-defined functions is a piece of code that you can call multiple times. So you don't have to write this piece of code 10 times, let's say, in your main logic. You just define it once and you can keep on calling that. User-defined function return only one value. If you have multiple values you want to return or you can use user-defined function blocks, which also stores the value. User-defined function will not store it. Function block will store it. So in function block, you can have multiple return values. Okay, we will come to that later when we talk about functions. So here I just want to highlight, let's work on master task and POUs, okay? Now if you come to tools here, some more information which might be helpful when you are looking for some information and you don't know where to find it. Come to tools, in the message you can find any warnings or errors. Animation table is a watch table. So for example, I want to notice or monitor the status of these inputs and outputs. If you have multiple inputs and outputs in the whole logic, but you want to monitor only few, then click on animation table, create a new table. And then your table is created. And there I can type the address, i0.1. And this is my tag already defined. And I have q0.0. You can see that it's coming here. And now if I go to commission, click on login. And let's see if the controller program is same. And I download from PLC to controller, come back to programming, and now you can see that I'm monitoring this value. It's zero. So if I actuate this, 0 0.1, you can see it's one and output is one as well. If I like, I can also trace this value, but tracing we will do when we talk about analog inputs because tracing digital and <laughs> true and false is not so much fun. So you can trace analog values with the tracing function here. Then you have memory objects. So if you want to know what kind of memory bits or memory words or what kind of addressing you can use in your PLC program, click on memory bits and you can see the memory start from M0 and it goes to M1024. So there are a total of, I believe, oh, here it's available. It says 1024. Let's make a table view. So you have uh, not 1024, but 500, up to 509 memory addresses, okay? Then you can have memory word as well. So in word, you have uh, designated with MW. And if you want to have double, then it's MD. And if you want to have floating, then it's MF. So you have different types of memory. If it's just bit, then use just M0, M1, M2. If it's word or double or floating point, then use specific addressing for that, okay? And if you want to store some constant values, you can do that in constant word. So let me just go out of the table view. So this is my KW0. I can store some information here and then I can use this constant anywhere in my program. For example, the value of pi. You don't need to write it every time 3.14 or something. You can just define a constant here and use this pi symbol anywhere in your program. 
Then you have system objects. In system objects, you have system bits. This has some information. You can read this information just for information. Uh, one example, uh, system bit four is a time base of 10 milliseconds generated by internal clock. So it's an internal clock that you have in your PLC. So if I use this S6, which is a one second base internal clock, I can use that here. Let me show you one example. So it's basically um, a bit which will be on one second on and one second off. So once I do that, let's send the controller this changes. Okay, I just uh, I don't do the backup just to show you this information. Now you can see that it's turning on and off. And what will happen? I'll press my input. My output will blink. It's one second time base, which means half second on and half second off. Sorry, not one second on, off. half second on and half second off. Similarly, you can also have one minute um, clock as well. So you have several system bits that you can use in your PLC program. You can go through that. It has a lot of information. Then you have system word, which has some more information about, for example, uh, modifies the cycle time of periodic tasks. If you want to change the cycle time of your periodic task, which we discussed before, you can do that from this address. And if you want to see the controller status, if it's no con not configured, stop, run, halt, powerless mode, you can do that here. For example, we can monitor that now in S6. So if I type here, it will show, you, show me the status. So, sorry, not S6, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was Word, SW6. So this was the bit. So controller status is showing three. Now, what does this three means? If you go back here, system Word, three was run. So PLC is in run mode. Such kind of information you can visualize from the system board. You can also display this information in your HMI or upstream in your dashboard if you want to see the status of your PLC. Then you have similarly input channel status, output channel status, IO scanner status. And in IO object, you can see your digital inputs, which are used, the address and symbol, digital outputs, similarly analog input outputs, counters, pulse generators. And then you have network objects. If you wanna, if you wanna know what are the addresses that you can use for network objects, for example, Ethernet IP, I, do, I have not configured yet, but I have selected, uh, maybe I can see, so this Modbus, right now you see no addresses because we did not configure that yet. We did not enable it. Once you enable it, you will have some addressing here, which you can see in this table as well. So similarly, you have IO scanner for Modbus serial and output. You can see all the table here. So once we configure that, I will show you this network objects here as well. Then you have software object. These are the uh, commands that you can use in your PLC program. For example, you can use commands for timers. And if you're using timers, you have these objects coming here with the addressing TM0 and so on. So it has a time base as well, one minute and type TON. So such kind of information you can find here for the timers. Similarly for the counters, messages, le 4 v 4 registers. We will talk about that in the later videos. This is for software objects. And then you have PTO objects and drive object. This is for motion control uh, programming. You can use objects from here for motion control. And then you have communication objects. If you want to read and write the variables via Modbus, you can configure that here. Or if you're sending an SMS, you can also configure that here. Then finally, you have user-defined function blocks objects. It will also come here if you define some user-defined function blocks. If you want to search and replace, you can do that here in search and replace function. Cross-reference will tell you where this bit, particular bit has been used in your program. So you can see that here you have rank zero, code view, and symbol view. For all for for this uh, command, if I select this one, it will tell you where it has been used in rung zero because it's used in rung zero. This is the code view and this is a symbol view, which is for this bit, and you can change that as well. So cross reference tell you where your particular bit has been used. Symbol list will tell you all the symbols that are uh, configured in your program. If you don't have the symbol, you can also generate the symbol. This is a uh, also interesting way. For example, if I go back to my task not task but configuration and digital input right now i'm in online mode let's log out okay let's back up the program and if i go to configuration i do not define this here also not here also not here okay i don't define the symbol for this one so now if i go to programming let's apply tools here you can see that I have um, 
Q0.0 .0 I have used. Okay, wait a second. I can just do that here. I don't define the symbol here. In this case, I can say, okay, generate symbols. And it will automatically generate symbols for me. Here you can see it automatically generated symbol for I0 underscore 1. Okay. So if you want to automatically generate symbols for the tags, which does not have a symbol, you can do that here. Or you can also remove auto-generated symbols. Simple way to add the symbols. And then you can also import and export the symbols in CSV format. Finally, you have memory consumption. It will tell you how much memory has been consumed based on what you have programmed, what you have used so far in your VLC software. So right now I have a lot of memory use because I just made one letter. All right. So this was a little bit about these two tabs, tasks and tool, which are very important. Now we jump to some programming exercise. So see you in the next video. Get ready. Let's program some PLC codes. Have fun. Bye-bye. Thank you.